I would see this day. Sooner or later. Besides, Bacon gave you our word we'd leave. I know. I suppose nobody believed him. No one but Sadat. Peace be upon his soul. May God grant him peace eternal. You also bless his memory? Why not? Without him and Bacon. Agreed. <laughs> Without Anwar Sadat, not only might I have died here, but so might my sons. Very well, and uh, have a good day, Captain Saeed. Captain Sadat?
Escort! Agent! Escort! Sooner! Arms! Mission and Escort! We are! Trust that everything will be to your utter satisfaction, Effendi. That will be all, thank you, Corporal. Sir. Stand at ease, Captain. Please, Captain, you can relax. I think you've made your point. You must forgive the corporal. He's a simple man. He doesn't really hate you. He just wishes that he could go home. And that is what he should do. Return to his home. This is my home, not yours. Precisely. And when your government no longer feels it necessary to have a British military presence here in Egypt, I shall, I trust, return to my home. The fat traitors that run our government are not Egyptians. In their hearts, they are British. <laughs> I must say, I've heard King Farouk called all kinds of things, but never British. No, no, Captain, he's your king. You make a very uncomfortable monarch in my country, I'm afraid. No, no, let's make no mistake about this. It is the Egyptians who are after your head. All right. Let's see. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Actually, not too bad. One more is in dreadful condition, but that won't take too long. But surely, Doctor, that there must be more. I am in a great deal of pain. No, no, no. I'm quite certain. Uh, take a look at this, for example. But why? This is a weekly trip outside of the jail. Besides, they cannot put me on trial if I am ailing. If they do, and my teeth are bad, I'll have my lawyer delay the trial until all the work is done. Ah. My friend, if I leave the one bad tooth alone, I have to drill the good ones. Allah be with you. Anything for a patriot. Captain? It is adequate. Good. So, let's get back to work, shall we? Now, let me see. So far, you have given us eight different versions of how you happened to be in the square that night. Which one are you going to try today? Uh, what day is today? Tuesday. Ah, Tuesday. Uh, story two, I think. How you just happened to be driving in the square that night, this Bedouin leapt upon your bill. 
No, that was version three, yeah? No matter, Major. That is my story, and I'll continue as long as I can get away with it. The fat man may be king, but it's your British rule of law that keeps me safe. But that's not all you need us for. Without us, Egypt would grind to an ugly halt. This country simply doesn't have to know how to run anything. Not the electricity board, the waterworks, and least of all a Suez Canal. There was a civilized Egypt when your ancestors were eating raw meat and painting themselves blue. Very likely. But that civilization collapsed because of no organization, no cohesion. You know, sometimes I think that you Egyptians are incapable of getting together on anything at all. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I doubt it. Look at it this way, Captain. If the Osman is such a terrible enemy of Egypt, how did it come about that you and Saeed acted alone in bringing about his death? As I said before, you would be surprised. Did have help? Perhaps we did. did. And so much for all that nonsense about being in the square. Ah! You know, I think you're part of a conspiracy to murder Osman. Conspiracy? Precisely. The conspiracy hatched in your quarters in Mankiban, where 17 officers met in the government military base, no less, and pledged to overthrow the legitimate government of this country. I'm afraid that your chum, Saeed, told us everything. <laughs> I have the biggest idea of what you did. Yes, it was in Anwar Sadat's room where we met. I, Hassan Saeed, Gamal Abdel Nasser, Hussein al-Amir. Stop! Very well. As you wish. It's feeling a little peckish anyway. But, uh, do think about it, Captain. And, oh, yes, uh, we were getting a bit concerned about you spending so much time alone. And find you a little company, hmm? I'm a loyal old... Hey, I never doubted it for a moment. They think that because they tricked you into lying, they have all they need to convict us. <laughs> under British law, Hassan, under British law, no confession is valid when it is extorted. And it was extorted, wasn't it, Hassan? Yes, it was extorted. All we need to do is tell the truth. And we'll be free. What is the truth, Anwar? We'll decide that later, Hassan. My big brother. No need. I'm quite safe from the British. Not to question your honesty, but to my casual eye, it is they who seem to be in control. Temporary, for a short time. The empire is crumbling. Any sustained pressure from any source from anywhere will send them scurrying back home. Atif, what about home? All is well. The village survives. And everyone speaks of you with great pride.
hope I haven't dragged you away from your beauty sleep, Captain. I no longer sleep since you put me back in that solitary cell. You like a drink? Oh, no, of course. You don't drink. I forgot. Sorry. You know, you and that comical Egyptian dentist friend of yours haven't been deceiving anyone with this extended treatment, Lark. Well, you have no idea how bad my teeth are. We colonials usually suffer from malnutrition. Will you shut up, Captain? Let me tell you this. If I had had my way, I'd have put a stop to this long ago. You'd have been on trial by now, all right. And to hell with the Cairo mob and think you're a bloody hero because you helped to murder Osman. Oh, yes. You'd have been for the high jump, all right. But the politician wouldn't let me. Said they had all the trouble they needed with the bloody Jews in Palestine. Thank you very much. For once, I wish them well in the uprising. The enemy of my enemies is my friend. But surely you didn't bring me here in the middle of the night to discuss my teeth or the state of the empire east of the Suez? Mm, no. No, I didn't. Then what? I thought you might have already heard on the grapevine. Mr. Atkins. Prime Minister, made an announcement in London about five hours ago. Apparently, the Jews are becoming too much for the Labour government. He is to petition the United Nations organization. He wishes to be relieved of the British mandate in Palestine. Oh, praise be to Allah. Your empire goes the same way as the Turks. Time alone will tell. However, for the moment, I've been instructed to cease legal proceedings against all Egyptian nationals. I suppose you'll make your way back to your farm. See if Farouk's administration is any better than ours. A lot easier on the teeth, too. Cheers. I wondered how long it would be before you came for help. I almost didn't come at all. It occurred to me, uh, Doctor, that uh, the Osman incident might not make me the most popular person in Farouk's court. 
Since you understand the situation, what makes you think they would reinstate you in the army? Well, surely the army can use every spare body it can find. Why? The struggle against the Zionist intruder? No, frankly, the Palestinians aren't of much concern to us, not at the moment. We're more worried about possible internal insurrection. Really? Absolutely. It seems that some of your ex-colleagues in the so-called Free Officers Association are... Well, the details can wait. If I were to see that you are reinstated, it would require a great deal of effort on my part. Oh, great personal service, I realize that. A favor you would no doubt be willing to repay at a later date, perhaps. My friends can always depend on me, sir. Prior favor or not, sir. Well, reinstatement might not be immediate. Have you gained full employment in the meantime? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Saeed and I are presently involved in the exciting world of catering supply. <laughs> 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 well, enjoy it. It won't be for long. Ah. This is my daughter, Jehan. She has just completed her schooling at the Anglo-Egyptian Institute in Cairo. Oh, I know of it. It has a fine reputation. Ah, have you been to Cairo? Ah, oh, many, many times. If you know Cairo, what are you doing here in the desert? Our company supplies the kitchens for the oil drillers. The desert offers me financial opportunities. By feeding foreigners? As long as I and Egyptian make the profit. Why not, then? Huh? Because they will never leave if we make it easy for them. They will own Egypt. And the American businessmen will replace the British as our masters. Jihan! You will please forgive my daughter. She sometimes forgets her place. Oh, on the contrary. On the contrary. Her spirit is in the right place. I, too, am a patriot, young lady. But not a blind one. Well, since your truck will need repair in our village, perhaps you will honor our humble table by joining us in our evening meal. Oh, you're most generous. And you are a gentleman, Mr. Sadat. Anwar El Sadat. Told you I was a patriot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid for you. He's so different. Different how? Jehan, you know damn well what I'm talking about. Yes, about prejudice, hate, 
It's been with us a long time, but you've never had to face it. I have. Jehan, I had such big plans for you. I had hoped that you would marry someone. Someone... Someone what? Well, does he have to be a criminal? That's old hat, Mother. He's reapplied to the army. What hope does he have? He was thrown out for murdering a man. No, he was charged merely as an accomplice. He never pulled the trigger. Don't bandy words with me, Jehan. It still tells us something about the man. No, it tells about the boy. Today he's a different... <laughs> a very different man. I cannot change what I have done, I, even if I wanted to. I cannot resurrect the dead. And now that Dr. Richard has arranged for my reinstatement into the army, <laughs> I can only hope for a more productive future with Jihan at my side. <laughs> well... I... I knew you'd go your own way in the end. After all, you're my little girl, aren't you? <laughs> you repeat after me. I, Jehan Raouf, Marry myself to you, myself to you. on the rules of, of the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran, and the traditions of, and the traditions of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him, and for the dowry, dowry agreed upon, agreed upon between, us between us, and all the present crowd, all the present crowd is witnessing. To this wedding. To this wedding. Mabrook. Mabrook. You can change rings. Anwar. 
And Farouk is using the Palestinians to distract the Egyptian people. That's the struggle we should face. That lady. Even if risk to your own life, it will only strengthen my resolve. <laughs> I knew you could still be counted on. Now, when they find out that we have met, they will question you. That will be the time to act. I will know when that time comes. I will find you. <laughs> Please explain once more. I want to hear for myself. I just told them. Uh, I was in the field with my troop. I was called back to the base to report to an unnamed colonel. It was Nasser. It must have been very important for him to bring you in from an exercise. I suppose so. He was just passing through. I had not spoken with him in many years. Since Mankava? Since the Free Officers Association? There is no such thing. It is a lie invented by Hassan to confuse the British. Please. I am a loyal officer. I only want to build my career and provide for my family. I believe him. He speaks the truth. So you see our problem. We need a channel of communication to these young officers who have served in Palestine. And you would like me to report back to you about any... Uh Unrest. Precisely. That is spying on my own brother officers. If you like, we prefer to call it your loyal duty to His Majesty King Farouk. Yes, but... Uh, the doctor will give you your instructions. Any failure on your part will be considered treason. The punishment for which I suspect you know. Anwar. Everyone is so nervous nowadays that you only make things worse by saying no. What do you expect me to say? That you would be grateful for the opportunity to show your loyalty to the king. Farouk is an overblown, deceased, immoral. No, please, please. Look, after all, this is his dining room. Now, now look, what have you got to lose? If, as you say, your little revolutionary group is dead, what have you to fear? Go visit with Nasser every now and then and tell me what he says. Is that so hard? Perhaps not. So there you are. And of course, if you were to lie to me, you would have to be very careful. Because if they found out, you would be dead and of no use to any of us. I must say this new man has a way with Baklava. I hope she grows up to speak more clearly than Uju. Uju, Uju? <laughs> ah, see? There's nothing wrong with you, Papa. That's right. That is right. <laughs> uh, 
Come on. John. Oh, how good you both look. This is for you, little wonder. See you, huh? I will prepare tea. Hmm? Yes. Ah, uh, come. Something I want you to hear. Oh, you've got a new record. They believe me anymore. They know that something has happened. How much longer, Commander? As long as it takes, until we are ready. Now, if Nagiev joins us and brings his tank division, then we might have enough strength to take Cairo. But he still waves in the wind. He'd better make up his mind. He's getting uncomfortable. I know. Look, inside the gift wrapping, there's a list of names. I want you to feed them to Rashad. Tell him you overheard me on the phone or something. They are all names of members of the Muslim Brotherhood. I want you to be my liaison with them. So the idea is to get Rashad to order you into making contact. Now do your best. We still don't know which side he's on. Gemal Abdel Nasser, the response of the Brotherhood. It is yes. The appointed day. Yes, Sean. Yes. Why do you doubt my word? I approached the Brotherhood as instructed, and the answer was no. No? That's what they said. You're lying, Sadat. Something is up. It's nothing. Nasser, he intrigues, he plots, he schemes. It all amounts to nothing in the end. Why did you slip your tail yesterday? Credibility. You think they'd let me anywhere near the Brotherhood with half of Farouk's secret service in tow? Well, if you are lying, we will know soon enough. 
They've got someone else infiltrating the Muslim Brotherhood. If you are lying, he will know about it, won't he? And that would be very sad for you. Sadder still for your wife and family. I have nothing to fear. Will you go again to the movies? Will you go I like that movie. I like it. Can you, can you imagine if Cairo was Bedford Falls huh? and I was George Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> One thing, you'd be an awful lot. Listen. Let me take you to the house. If that El Nuri woman is complaining about the baby's teething again... Hmm. Ah, Baby's oh, crying. There is a message from Colonel Nasser. Nasser? Yes, he came twice. Uh, he said there was a surprise get-together at the foreign ministry and he didn't want you to miss it. You probably missed him. seem in a hurry. I was on my way to the foreign office. Please let me pass. You go nowhere until we can determine just what side you're on. a general, even a brigadier, amongst a lot of you. Hmm. Brought down by a bunch of colonels. With respect, Your Majesty, you are not brought down yet. It's just a matter of time, Colonel. History teaches us that a deposed king is quickly killed. I assume you've drawn up a formal list of demands. In return, for your guaranteed safe passage via the Royal Egyptian Navy, you will abdicate the throne forthwith. For the time being, your heir will serve as head of state. You will make a full disclosure of all hidden assets, including Swiss banking connections. Hmm. <laughs> you will acknowledge the sovereign right of the Egyptian people to select their own form of government. Do you really intend to let the people choose? No, I'm sure you've already chosen the form of government they'll get once you've gotten rid of me. And once in exile, you will never return to Egypt, having formally renounced all claims and pretensions to public office in this nation for yourself and for your heirs. Is that all? Yes. In anticipation of your cooperation, arrangements have been made with the Navy. You leave at six in the morning. You should arrange a destination. And if I refuse? You yourself made mention of the historical pattern for monarchs who overstay their role. I will think the matter over. That will be all.
What is this all about? It's Sadat, isn't it? Yes. Well, Sadat, I'm willing to bet my life that you are a treacherous rebel. One of Colonel Nasser's boys, hmm? What if I am? Ben, you are in luck. Because I happen to be one too. Nasser thought it best you not know he was keeping an eye on you. You? A witness? A spy? If you like, though I prefer double agent. Colonel Nasser likes to keep his group separate. Security measure. Yes. All right, come with me. Colonel Nasser wants to see you. Of course. You go, Gamal. Farouk will leave on that ship. And if he doesn't, and he rallies the rest of the army to his side. Then we rally the people, the masses. God knows they hate Farouk enough to follow anyone who promises to get rid of him. Not necessarily. If they believe that Farouk is being deposed to make way for the return of the British or uh, any other foreign power, they will defend him to the death. Uh, since we control the broadcasting system, we can tell the people whatever we want, Gamal. That worship whichever one of us gives them news of Farouk's humiliation. Yes, if and only if he goes. But if he stays and, God forbid, he frustrates the revolution, then whoever acts as the spokesman for the revolution on the radio will be made an example. A public hanging at the very least. Whatever is decided, Gamal, we must move quickly. Certainly. Certainly. As soon as you can find me a national hero with the, the courage or the stupidity to go on the radio and be our spokesman. And before Farouk plays his hand. Such an announcement, it must be made by all of us. Come on. If it is not safe for you to do it, then we must all do it together. Oh, yes, I see us all huddled round the microphone, reading one word at a time. But your point is well made, though. Whoever acts as spokesman for the revolution must go into a period of political obscurity for a time, until he is forgotten. It is written, Allah provides for the faithful. People of Egypt, rejoice. Allah has been heedful of our prayers. The rule of foreigners and the puppets is done. Again, as in our glorious past, we shall be masters in our own house. We are not a little people, and no longer will be treated as such. Not by foreigners, nor, nor by ourselves. ourselves. No, no not, not even, even by, by he would call, call himself king. king. I, I tell, tell you now that the king has abdicated his throne. <laughs> Former king will leave this country tonight, never, never to return. return. Today we shrug, and the chains, chains fall from us. There shall arise from the stench of those we expel today, from the ashes of the so-called Farouk, we will raise a mighty nation, a beacon to the world. This is our destiny. Together, we will join hands. We will be our own masters. We will lead the Arab world back to its former greatness. The age of suppression and neglect are over forever. And so, Speaker, surely the problems of the Northern Irrigation District are vexing as the death of livestock from infestation. I thank you for this time. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes, yes. I move to adjourn, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes. Uh. Adjourn.
I totally forgot. Boredom breeds a bad memory. Has he been here long? About half an hour. Uh, what's his title? Special political officer to the British ambassador. Name's Robert Thompson. 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 Mr. Thompson, please forgive me. A rather important discussion. And the speaker. You. Don't worry, Mr. Speaker. We must all have our little priorities. You. Afraid so, old friend. Can't stay in the army forever, can we? And I seem to have some credentials for the job. In a way, I suppose you do. But I would not recommend you. Well, then. Thank God they didn't ask you. Hmm? This is uh, an informal visit. If you prefer I left, I'll find some other chap to... Uh... That depends on where you came. Well, I feel that I owe you something. What did you have in mind? Some sound advice. <laughs> Thank you. But Egypt no longer needs any advice from you or your government. Tell NASA to keep his hands off. Hands off of what? Oh, come now, Anwar. If he's planning something as big as that, the whole Revolutionary Council must know about it. Having the slightest idea what you're talking about, Robert. My God, you're a good actor. All right, have it your way. At least you've been warned. I'll be looking for you at the Independence Day Parade. See if your president's speech surprises you. Oh, yes. The... You know what I used to say to the chaps in the mess? I used to say, at the end of the day, you'd be the one who'd be there. Good show. Bloody good show. and glorious day, for it marks the birth of the new Egypt, our redemption from foreign rule, our resurrection as a free people. This day we live in the heart of all Egyptians, even of all Arabs, for under Allah we are one people, one nation, but this day will be remembered not only as the day of liberation, but for a new reason. Today, with the assent of the Revolutionary Council, I declare that the Suez Canal is nationalized in the name of the sovereign will of the Egyptian people, I declare that this great achievement, this greatest natural resource of the Egyptian nation has been returned irrevocably and unalterably to the people of Egypt. This is outrageous. 
The council had no idea you intended to do this, and yet in our name... Now, now, Shafi, there wasn't time. There has been a sudden change in our, um... Strategic position. Let us call it our strategic position. A change which made it possible for us to do this. It was necessary for national pride. Unless the British and French knew of this in advance. Well, of course not. But how do you expect me to save this country from... Good God, something had to be done to save us from starvation. The British and the French were the last people I wanted to know. Gamal, this could lead to war. Then so be it. To die in defense of our fatherland is most blessed. Not if it is us doing the dying. Save it for the propaganda, Emir. But death there will surely be. Why? Without the canal, Europe dies. It's as simple as that. No oil, no nothing. They'll call it an act of war. Impossible. It is our territory. I am simply cancelling a commercial contract whereby we, we agree to lease it to them. A reasonable argument, Gamal, but they tend to shoot first and ask questions later. Not this time. Neither Britain nor France will lift a finger. Now, I can assure you of this because of the change in our strategic position. The Americans, the Americans will not permit any intervention. They'd be mad to desert their allies. They have to stand up for their allies. Well, I would agree with you, but I am not Eisenhower. It is a matter of pride. Since the last war, he likes to think of himself as military governor of the free world. Eisenhower is but one man, Gamal. America is governed by thousands of men. And therefore, they are paralyzed by swift action. Trust me. Gamal is surely a great inspiration to us all. one of his longest suits. You didn't know anything, did you? What would you do? Us? Nothing at all. Not yet, anyway. Please tell me, did President Nasser really mean what he said about applying the Arab boycott to the Suez Canal? I should hope so. We are pledged to the annihilation of the Zionists. The Israelis might not take it lying down. Closing the Suez Canal is a rather serious matter for them. They're likely to fight. There are 100 million of us in Islam. There are only 2 million of them. You believe in numbers. They believe in their Old Testament. They think they're protected, you know. There is but one God, and that is Allah. And he is greater even than the Zionists. Well, I'm sorry to have to say, but there are occasions when I personally would back the Old Testament against Allah. Stand warm. Very well. Tensions have increased in the Middle East with Egypt's blockade of the Straits of Tehran. This is the overseas service of the British Broadcasting Corporation. War has broken out in the Levant. Israel has reacted to what it termed unacceptable provocations that threatened its existence, including, but not limited to, the closure of the Suez Canal by crossing the Sinai frontier. The vastly outnumbered Israelis are now engaged in heavy fighting with Egyptian forces. This is Reuters news service reporting from the Near East. It is now clear that Egypt intends to deny the state of Israel the right of innocent passage through the Suez Canal. The first commercial vessels bound for Haifa are being delayed at the south end of the International Waterway. 
Declaring the physical safety of the canal at risk, Britain and France today dispatched armed forces to occupy the canal zone and safeguard it from damage caused by the outbreak of fighting between the Arabs and the Israelis. This has been denounced throughout the Arab world as a crude attempt to reoccupy the canal and thus invalidate the recent nationalization of that waterway. Stupid, stupid, stupid! He's given the British a reason to return. This time, they will never leave. How could he know that the Israelis would be as insane as to invade us? In 18 hours, they've occupied the entire Sinai. I wouldn't call that insane. Not to mention giving the British and the French an excuse to occupy the canal. Better them than the Israelis. Wait, wait. That the only excuse that the British and French have given to the world is to protect the canal, to keep it open. But don't you realize, gentlemen, at no time has anyone challenged our right to nationalize the canal. The American ambassador has asked to meet us. I wanted you here for that. Ah, then there is something for which you find us useful. Members of the Revolutionary Council, the President of the United States has asked me to apologize on behalf of our allies, Britain, France, and Israel, and to disassociate ourselves from the warlike actions taken against Egypt. What do you intend to do about it? We have informed them of our disappointment in their actions. Oh. That should make all the difference. It might. President Eisenhower has personally demanded Israeli withdrawal from the Sinai. And I can imagine their response. All they ask is that their merchant ships be given the right of innocent passage through the canal. Is that all? Well, they wanted more. But that is all the President would agree to support. Uh, Mr. Ambassador. How do you intend to get the Israelis to accept your president's views, huh? Threaten them? Bomb them? Break diplomatic relations? Uh, import sanctions? Yes, precisely. My government has indeed indicated to the Israelis the consequences of refusing our peace initiative. And that is all you want from us? To let the Israelis use the canal? That and the hope that you will keep in mind our friendship and solidarity at the end of the month when we begin discussions on a mutual defense treaty. Done. Agreed. And to present my deepest gratitude to the President and Mr. Dulles. Gentlemen. <laughs> Do you think he speaks the truth? Of course. The Americans are far too naive to lie about a thing like this. Do they realize that this could bring down Anthony Eden's government? Obviously. Obviously they do. Well, come on. It seems you've outguessed them all, including those of us around this table, <laughs> except your promise to allow the Israelis to use the canal. <laughs> that was ridiculous. The Israelis will never, never use the canal. But you promised. No one expects me to keep my word to the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the Americans? Well, who cares about them? When they find out that I have gone back on my word, what will they do? Tell the British and the French to reinvade? <laughs> no. No. We have gained everything. We have lost nothing. So, what do we learn from this? 
We learn that Gamal knows best what should be done. We learn that Gamal has defeated the armies of two great empires. That Gamal must be the savior that the prophets foretold would arise to lead us. We learn that Egypt has only one master. We have learned one other thing, that the United States is a very poor ally. Why? They were merely trying to... The only thing that matters is that they have deserted their three most reliable allies. Thank God we are non-aligned. The Americans are so undependable. And to the glorious Soviet peoples, we say, welcome. Welcome to our brothers in the armed struggle against capitalist imperialism and Zionist aggression. <laughs> now, we can proceed toward the future, confident arm in arm with a superpower that respects the identity of an ancient civilization such as ours, admires our Islamic soul. Socialism in the name of Islam is the destiny of the Arab peoples. is madness, Gamal. We aren't equipped to handle our own problems, let alone federate with Syria. And so no longer is there an Arab Egypt. No more an Arab Syria. But from today forward, brothers, in socialism, in Islam, the United Arab Republic. Gamal, a war in Yemen's quicksand good short-term propaganda, but a disaster. I send our troops to Yemen not to fight in a foreign country. No, for any Arab land is any Arab's land. And when the reactionary tyrant in the Yemen has been destroyed, then truly it will be the turn of the Zionists. realize the truth that no matter what we say or do in the short run, the only long-term solution to peace in this region is the Arab solution. The people of Egypt speak with but one voice, that of our leader, Gamal Abdel Nasser. Peace be upon us all. Listen now, people of Arab Egypt. Hear the voice wait, the there must still be more. Who can bother to wait? Once they start praising Nasser, they won't stop. Is that so bad? Nasser is Egypt. People need a leader. Egypt is Nasser. Someone who can symbolize Egypt. I take it you're disappointed that I failed your expectation. At least you are still perceptive. Yeah, well, it's about time that you grew out of your impatience, Jan. What is that supposed to mean? Damn it! Why, I'm the only man in Egypt who, who, whose wife makes him miserable because of politics. Isn't that why you married me, Anwar? All right, all right. Have the go, Anthony. 
Do you know what they call you behind your back? Yes. Bakishisa. Exactly. Major, yes, yes. Except for Amir, he refers to you as Nasser's poodle. Well, I suppose that's a whole lot better than uh, being called Nasser's puppet. Amir has a very special relationship with Nasser. It will not last forever. Well, shouldn't you do something about it? Like what? Challenge Nasser. Make him explain himself. If not for Egypt, then at least for your own self-respect. It is for Egypt that I remain silent. Now, a wife should not talk like this to a husband and master. An Arab wife, maybe. But I am half English. Yes, well, it suits you. How can Egypt benefit from your silence? How can that be? Because there is no stopping Nasser. If you differ with him, either you are ignored or shifted aside or no longer trusted. Sooner or later, he will make a mistake or, or see the error of his ways. Then he will turn to me. Not if you are one step behind the mayor in his shadow. Jihan. Jihan. Amir is a fool. He is the real yes man. But he's more ambitious than he is clever, and sooner or later he will destroy himself. And when he does, then my time will come. Ah, you English. <laughs> the day of liberation is near. I have today ordered the United Nations peacekeeping force out of the Sinai. The ceasefire of 1956 is ended. We shall now complete the Arab solution to the Jewish problem. <laughs> and for this mighty crusade, I give you the commander-in-chief of our mighty legions, Abdul Hakim Amer. Yes, yes, be feeling no, no. Speak, please, your <laughs> There's no need to ridicule me. If I have been your obedient yes man all these years, surely you must know why. No, no, I don't. Please, Kamal, let, let us be honest. My God. You don't realize any of it, do you? What would I have gained by arguing? Even more hostility from, from, from Amir? Hmm? And you know where that leads, don't you? Back to prison. Have you looked around you, Gamal? Hmm? Of the originals, besides myself, only a mere remains. And I too would have disappeared if I had not seemed too limp to be of danger, too obedient to worry about. Even if this were true, what terrible thing makes you speak now? Now when Amir is at the front and is not here to answer for himself, it still might not be too late. Too late for what? To postpone the invasion. What? Please, please, Gamal. The men are not ready. They are not trained. The, the Russians have sent us second-class faulty weapons. Cast-offs. There's no morale, no confidence. Come on. Amir is, is so jealous of his power. He hasn't even briefed his senior officers. He won't share anything. Next week, Amir will attack. 
and you will be proved neither wrong or right. If the former, you will be jailed for treason. If you are correct, then you will have to face Amir with this speech. But either way, there will only be two of the original group left when it is over. Sadat? I am he. I am sent by President Nasser. He requires your presence immediately. At four o'clock in the morning. What is this? Are you in danger? Is the danger Anwar? Do you have any idea why he wants me at this time of night? The war of liberation against the Jews. It's a great victory, brother. We are destroying the Zionists on every front. Even our Syrian brothers and Hussein's Arab legion have joined the slaughter. Are you not happy? Oh, yes. Yes, brother. Just uh, give, give me time to dress. that seems rather pointless. I left fear behind me when I decided to tell you what I thought of Emir. And that was not easy for me to do. You're not a man that takes criticism easily. And how fortunate for Egypt that is. That I listened to you, we would have avoided this war, given up a great victory. I gave you my best considered advice. And what use, tell me, is an advisor who proves to be so totally wrong? He is of no use whatsoever. He is a danger to the nation. He is little better than a traitor. You don't belong in the same room with a mirror. Then let uh, us leave before a mirror arrives. Do you know where to find me? In case you decide where it is I do belong. intruders are digging their own graves. Near the usurper settlement, the so-called Tel Aviv, the populace is in panic. We continue to advance on all fronts. Our victorious third army has moved five more miles into liberated land. Allahu Akbar! Five miles in three hours? 
It seems strange, Jihan. If, as they say, our third army has moved five miles and Hussein's Arab legions have marched through Jerusalem six hours ago, that they should have linked up by now. Yet it's not a word. I, I think it is time to break the law and listen to some short wave. This report is coming in from Jerusalem. Not modern West Jerusalem, but from the old city, the place most sacred to Jews for the 2,000 years of the dispersion, and the place where Arabs have prevented them from visiting since they took control. But no longer. The temple is now being cleared by victorious Israeli troops, and just 16 hours after the outbreak of hostilities, certain trends are clear. The Israelis, in a desperate bid for their very survival, have virtually destroyed the Egyptian and Syrian air forces. So secure is Israeli control of the Sinai airspace, they are ferrying journalists by air to witness the total... Anwar, you are running to NASA? And meet La Paz, it is not necessary to, to say it is Egypt. A hundred mile square traffic jam, and the entire Egyptian tank force attempts to move through the path that is wide enough for two or three tanks abreast. The Israelis are knocking at the door to Damascus. But Amir's reports... <laughs> lies! Lies, lies, lies! The Israelis are within striking distance of Cairo. They may not have lost a single man. Precisely. You must make a decision. Omnib! Jerusalem is it! We no longer have an air force. And it also seems that the Russian made air defense weapons, and that's what they were promised. The systems are excellent. The men operating them are incompetent. <sighs> I implore you, put your troops under the command of my officers. Never. Please, Kamal. Please, never. That's how it began with the British. First it was the advisors, and then slavery. The alternative is to beg the Jews to let you alone. Or to make peace with them. Never! But my colleague is correct. I cannot give you command of my armies. Of course. I understand your mistrust. But I remind you, the Soviet peoples are freedom-loving. The British are imperialist exploiters. In three, perhaps four days, the Jews will be at the gates of Cairo. My offer of brother solidarity will still be available to you. What are we going to do, Anwar? We've been behind before. It is a habit to cut it close. But never this low. Never this close. Come on. Come on, once the initial shock of surprise is gone, our troops will bounce back. But we must the Israelis at Mitla. Time is what we need, Gamal. Time. Time for what? Have you thought of anything? Yes. The United Nations, the Americans. Now, now, if we can hold the Israelis on battleground, we can destroy them in the eyes of the rest of the world. Now, it's worked before. But will it work now? Yes. And all of Egypt will follow you. You must take personal charge. I have to thank you, Anwar. Just for being here. Not leaving me alone in a bad moment. Even I need someone who believes in me. Just a patriot.
The six-day victory by tiny Israel is being hailed as the greatest achievement in military history. One old man told this reporter, after 2,000 years, we need cry no more. God has remembered his promise. But of course you can do something. You can't leave us twisting in the wind. Really? You seem to forget, Colonel Sadat. You virtually expelled my country from Egypt. Surely you're talking to the wrong man. And now we are offering you the chance to resume our friendship. Sure, you should jump at the opportunity. Mr. President, in our view, Egypt has become a client of the Soviet Union. And Israel is a puppet of the United States. Only you can get them to withdraw. Withdraw? Yes. We did that for you once before, in 1956, and you repaid us by deliberately breaking your word. We forced an Israeli withdrawal in return for promises from you and your allies. The Israelis believed us, but all they got when the accounts were in were more dead civilians. I'm afraid neither of us believe you anymore, Mr. President. Then we will invite the direct participation of the Russians. Go ahead. But I think you'll find they'd rather not try the Israelis on the battlefield. It might prove too embarrassing for them. Nonsense. They have sworn to stand by us to the end. I think you'll find, Mr. President, that this six-day war is the end. Your country is virtually bankrupt. Your armed forces destroyed, totally defeated in six days. Your people disillusioned. I'd like to help, but not the way things are now. It was you who threatened them with destruction. Against all odds, they prevailed. How can you expect them or us not to question your future conduct? Mr. President. I think he's saying that they will change their policy if we change presidents. Egypt needs a new start. Your hour may have come, Anwar. You cannot resign now. If you do, all our enemies will have every excuse they need to take advantage of this mess. You must salvage what you can, and you damn well better do it now. me taking over. <laughs> Some yes men. Yes, I will keep later today. I, Yamal Abdel Nasser, hereby resign all offices and positions entrusted to me by the people of Egypt. This I must do as a matter of honor and as an act of respect to the public good with which I was entrusted. What matters now is to admit past mistakes, to seek out new ideas, new attitudes, and above all, new blood. We must prepare to resume this struggle against the Zionist oppressor. Though I have failed to annihilate them, we must turn now to someone who perhaps may. Though I leave, this holy struggle must go on. Alar Akbar. The spirit of the prophet will go with all of you.
How good a likeness is that? Hardly a face worth memorizing. I personally guarantee he won't last more than a month or two. Too weak. His nickname is, or was, I suppose, Nasser's Poodle. And since Nasser wanted to be sure whoever took over would be next to useless, someone who could never fill his shoes, well, sort of a caretaker while the various factions fight it out. Now, this is Abu El Ali, Moscow's boy, a Soviet client and proud of it. His so-called Communist Party is just waiting for the chance to bury Sadat. This is Yusuf Sibai, journalist. Not too popular under Nasser. Too much of an intellectual for Gamal, but typical of the kind of man Sadat wants on his side. Sadat listens to him. And this is Ali Sharaf. Always struck us as fairly reasonable. Fell into disgrace under Nasser. Sadat brought him back. Hopes he's something of a liberal Democrat. The trouble is, Sharaf thinks Sadat's a lightweight. He also thinks of him as a caretaker. As soon as one merges as the strongest group, they'll dispose of Sadat, and the country can get on with its business. That only works if the man you name has no faction of his own. That's Sadat. Yes. Mr. Elliot Richardson of the United States is here to see you, sir. Uh, send him in. Mr. Richardson. Mr. President. Welcome. Please, please, sit down. Thank you. I... I trust that uh, you will convey to President Nixon our gratitude for the condolences that uh, you bring on his behalf. Naturally, Mr. President. And I also trust that you will communicate our eagerness to forge a new relationship with the government and the peoples of the United States. An eagerness that is reciprocal. Really? Yes. We wish to be of help. Anxious to help ensure that your government is... Stable? Secure? Exactly. Good. Then your course is obvious. There is only one thing that can guarantee the stability of our regime, or any regime that rules Egypt, for that matter. We must restore our Egyptian pride, our national honor. And we must also avenge Zionist aggression, June 1967. To be frank, Mr. President, my country feels that economic reform is more important than preparing for war. That and... And the removal from office of those with divided loyalties. Uh, the communists? <laughs> they are of no immediate threat. My country is ready to assist in the making of peace, not war. Good. Then... Until that glorious day when our council settles and peace becomes possible, we will become natural allies. I can only hope that in the meantime, we do not become enemies. I trust that will never be the case. On that we both agree. My best wishes to your president. Thank you. Good day.
You're right. Smart Money says he's gone within the year. Airport. They've got the lamps unpacked. Now you're out of the dark. Oh, thank you, Ati. But it seems they forgot to pack your linens. Oh, those have gone elsewhere. Government House Atif comes equipped with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this place. Ah, it's incredible. Imagine, you and my brother at the top, Lili. It's not too late for you to join us, Atif. Anwar has yet to name an aide from the Air Force. As tempting as it would be, I can't. My place is with my squadron. My time will be when we recross the canal. That day will come, Atif. It is Anwar's dream. Well, with Atif's help, we are sorting things out. as it can be. I, I am no president, Johanna. I'm no head of state. I'm afraid this discovery comes too late. You've already been sworn in. <laughs> it's a mockery. It's a complete mockery. It's... They're laughing at me. These are not easy times, are they? No. I, I... I... I am like... I'm like an actor. Trying to make a good imitation of a good leader, but... The truth is... Uh, I am not very good. I, I have no support, not from the people who count. The, the, the country is bankrupt. The world is, is waiting for the government to collapse them, and then for me to go scurrying off with my tail between my legs, but I, 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 I am afraid that I am not the man that you hoped. I, I, I am no Gamal Abdel Nasser. Forget Nasser, Anwar. Be your own man. You can be a leader greater than Nasser ever dreamed possible for himself. But you must be your own man. Imitate Nasser and you must fail. Be Anwar Sadat. Do the things that you believe in and your name will live when Nasser is nothing but a footnote. <laughs> I... I'm afraid that's uh, it's a lot easier said. Done. I, I have no no support from the council. Uh, nobody turns to me for advice. I I'm like a caretaker. Only if you choose to be, do it your way. They will follow. Look, what have you got to lose? Come here. Come here. <laughs> Is he here? He's in the living room. Rob, what on earth? At this hour of the night? Some things are best done under cover of darkness, Anwar. Abu El Ali and his communists. They are scared that if they wait too long, you will entrench yourself. Leave it to the communists to be frightened of me entrenching myself. This was passed to me by a friend. A 
branch manager at the telephone company. It is a complete record of Abu's plotting with his friends. Nasser had personally ordered the surveillance. I thought that was against the law. The only law was Nasser. What he did was legal. But it is well for you, Anwar. With this, you can convict them all. With tainted evidence? No, 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 Sharaf. If I am to lead Egypt, let it be under the rule of law. That one man. Then he won't lead very long. Communists like Abu have little regard for your rule of law. Even thank Allah that I am not one of them. Sharaf, I live and breathe today because of only one reason. The British lived under the rule of law. Without that decency, we're no more than barbarians. Now, what would you have me do? Arrest them in the middle of the night? Yes, yes, as Nasser would have done. I am not Nasser. I am Sadat. And it must be done my way. And you will let them walk free? And if I do have them arrested based on illegal tape, what then? Why then your little faction is free to get rid of me. I get rid of Abu for you, thus eliminating your only competition. Now, I want this tape destroyed. Oh, no. ah. And I want Abu and his friends to know that it has been destroyed. What? And why you can't be serious? No, on the contrary, madam. It could be a political masterstroke. Yes. If Abu and his current followers know that there is no proof of their collaboration, why then they have a chance to a new start? Precisely. And once they know that, they have a free choice to join me. No one can question their past loyalty. Now. We must destroy the evils of the past, Sharaf. Begin anew. You will destroy this tape. <laughs> Sharaf, my friend. If I am to be murdered by politicians, let it be Anwar El Sadat who dies. Not some sad man trying to imitate a dead Nasser. husband is either a saint or a fool. And I'm not sure that Egypt can afford either. He is exactly what Egypt needs. Please. Watch out for him, Shara. Perhaps. I will see him. conduct of national affairs is my concern. Surely it is you, the courageous men of the Air Force, who must form the cutting edge and lead us toward a new Egypt. Egypt does not stand alone. With brave allies and helpers, we shall rid our region of the horrors of yesterday. Woe unto those nations who do not hear our roar. But we must always remember, regardless of... Orderly room, Sergeant El Alfoli. Impossible is speaking to the troops. Orders of Colonel Abu El Ali. Sergeant, this is Colonel Sharaf. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Colonel El Ali mentioned you specifically. In no way am I to call the president to the telephone for you. But only Egyptian line to be allowed the privilege of sacrifice for our holy cause. The pain of the defeat was ours alone. The glory of redemption likewise shall be a moment for Egyptian only. Oh, this is what it who do we have Can they see that?
hell are you doing here? Am I in danger? Or under arrest? Just the ringlet. I've never enjoyed the front page of your paper more than today, you see. Thank you, thank you. We've won a battle, yes, provided we've got all the enemy. That's all the key ones, I should think. So, Anwar, do you intend to leave it at that? No, definitely not. But tell me, Sheriff, why did you warn me? The public story or the truth? Both. Well, the public story is simple. I am a patriot serving my president. Privately, I wasn't prepared to see Abu selling Egypt to Russians. For all your faults on war, your vision is for this country. Besides, my side wasn't yet ready to unseat you. I appreciate your candor. Even if the message is uh, unsettling, Tell me, Yusuf, what will the newspapers say tomorrow to the people? The truth, Anwar, I've never trusted the Soviets. The only problem they have with imperialism is when the empire is someone else's. The people will support you, Anwar, provided you continue to act forcefully. Egyptians have little time for weakness. So what can my newspapers tell the people about your next step? I assume there is a next step Already planned. There definitely is. And you will be present. Oh, very nice, thank you. Hold it up, please. One more, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman Brezhnev. President Zara, thank you. Let me officially welcome you to our capital and extend to you the warm fraternal greetings of the peace-loving Soviet peoples. 
and we Egyptians, for our part, return that affection. It is a strange affection that declares our political view illegal. We do not prohibit political points of view, sir. Only political parties with murderous designs on our head of state. That is not the party. It was nothing to do with the party. It was the stupidity of one man uh, who... Abu El Ali. Abu Ali. He did not act alone. They never do. But your police should confine themselves to this Abu person and his criminal lies. And that is precisely what we did. And much to our surprise, discovered that they had jailed every member of the Egyptian Communist Party. Come, come now, Mr. Secretary. Would you do otherwise? Uh, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You are seriously considering crossing the canal, aren't you, attacking Israel? No voice is louder than that of battle. It is not in the very good interest of the Soviets to see the Israelis so threatened that the Americans can have an excuse to intervene. I know. But if you wish to protect your best interest, you have no choice but to help me. If you do not, then my troops will push all the way to Jerusalem. America be damned. Your troops? Yes. <laughs> A rabble. <laughs> they won't even get across the Suez without our help. Never mind Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, come, 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 come. Sit down. It was only a bad joke. You must overcome it. We wish to help you get rid of the Zionist state. Are you listening to me? We are willing to lend you troops. Russians? No. Cubans. Come, come now, Mr. Secretary. Is it me you find so stupid? Me who seems too foolish to be taken seriously? Or is it all of Egypt? We will give you whatever weapons you require. Aircraft, surface-to-air missiles, calocious tank pots. You may have everything you want. With the Soviet troops to man it. Never. Never? Never, never, never. At least. Accept advisors, a few officers. Done. Ah. Well, those divisions moved. I asked you a question. Why were they moved after my explicit instructions about infantry emplacements? I was ordered, sir. By whom? Mr. President, the order was from me. I would like to see you upstairs. How dare you counter my orders? Merely helping, sir. I thought I was correcting an obvious error. What error? In order to put those units into the Sinai, you left the defenses of Cairo wide open. Nonsense! Those positions in question would be filled by missile batteries. And which batteries are those, Mr. President? What do you mean, which batteries are those, Mr. President? Were those missiles that were promised to me by your Mr. Brezhnev in Moscow months ago? That is a political matter, sir. It is none of my business. Yes, but well, then you had better make it your business. Because without those weapons, we have to delay this invasion yet again. Dismissed. Much longer, Anwar. <sighs> the students are calling for an invasion. They want the Sinai back. I think it might be well to close the universities for a week or two. Back back? Yes. I don't understand, do they? I don't understand what kind of mess we inherited from Nasser. How badly he let them down. Of course. 
course not. He remains their hero. You follow Nasser's line, they'll follow you. But this delaying, trying to cooperate with the Soviets, no, no. the students' hearts are still with Gamal. You must act. I will act. I, I will act. But I will not close the universities. Anwar, there is no other option. Yes, there is. I can face the students, answer their doubts. But first, I must get them to realize that I can be trusted. Huh? I can be strong. No. Never, never, never. Then we will do it alone. Am I to take you seriously? Am I to believe that you are mad enough to cross the canal, take on the Israelis without our support? No, no, not even you are that foolish. He still underestimates the Egyptian people. You are in no danger from the Israelis. We will protect you from them. You? Protect us from them? No, no, no. It is they who will need protection. To you, our country is just a part of a chessboard. What does it matter to you that you lied to me? We are going to drive the Israeli from the Sinai. It is our land. It is our birthright. We are not children who can survive only from your paternal charity. We, ah. under we understand your passion. We sympathize with it. And when the time comes that it is appropriate for the liberation of the Sinai, we will inform you of it. Then you had better do it through a third party. Because you and your troops and your diplomats have 72 hours to leave my country. And you can all go to the hell that you Marxists do not believe in. And no wonder. For we Egyptians are not a little people, a silly people destined to be an historical footnote to the glories of a superpower's empire. The British have learned this. The Americans too, in their time, have learned that no one can be Egypt's master save the Egyptian people themselves. And my people, hear me. We shall be masters in our own house. And so, for all these reasons, I am here today to tell you that I have instructed the Soviet Union to remove all its nationals from our soil, all of them, immediately. This is my decision. It is surely better to stand alone than to be surrounded by those would make us their puppets. For this is a new era. The old days are gone. The old regimes passed. Even that of our beloved hero, Gamal Abdel Nasser. We must cherish his good works, but we must stop ignoring his many, many excesses. We have restored the rule of law. We must continue to heal the bad aspects of Nasser. You were there with Nasser, his colleague. What is it to speak up then? Tell him what you now tell us. <laughs> silent. For the same reason the questioner refuses to identify himself. Now, do you understand science?
Now, before this year is out, we will have recrossed the Suez without the Soviets. We will have driven the Zionist usurper from our land, no matter what the cost he will be, for we are Egyptians before we are Arabs. It is up to us, the largest, the most important of the Arab nations, to lead the way, no matter what the cost in blood, no matter who will die. This is our crusade. We will lead the struggle to liberate our land through the destruction of those who have no place in the Arab world. Allah will follow our warriors! Remember our father, our king, on this most holy of holy days. This is Captain Sadat. Four minutes to target. Four minutes. Our brothers and sisters who have passed on from this existence since last Yom Kippur, Lord, be gracious unto them and grant them perfect rest beneath the shelter of thy wings. Na lakumni talel kadish. Itadal mitadash shmei raba v'yamad ibrak yuchei. Amen. 
Yehei Shnei Rabban Barach Beulam Ulal Mei Al Maya Iparach Ishabach Paar Son Hamei Ishadar Mitale Mitalal Shnei Dikusha Brihu The Eila Uleila Min Kol Bircha Tavishirata Captain Sadat to squadron. We're approaching target. Arm your weapons. Plus, at the end of the first week of hostilities, it is now clear that the early advantage gained by the Egyptians by reason of surprise has been played out. The daring counter-crossing of Suez by the Israelis appears to have succeeded beyond wildest expectations. This Sharon could be our undoing. He's on our side of the canal, and he's almost got a third army surrounded. it. He must release the victory statement before the tide of battle turns completely, where we can still bargain for a position of strength, before this becomes another six-day war, I must seek a ceasefire. Or pray that our pilots can save the day. Mr. President, I regret to inform you that today, over the Sinai, your brother, Captain Sadat, was killed in action. No. If I could just have seen. You died a hero, my brother, for me, for Egypt, and for all of us. And God knows. Six-day war. But who is to avenge the horror of your blood? 
why must these vendettas go on and on, these killings go back to forth? I killed you. No more. No more. No more. I killed you. No. I killed them all. No, no, no. Yes, I, I, I killed them. No. Your duty to the state, to the people. My duty is to their future, not to their martyrdom. I swear. If there is a way to stop the killing, I will find it. If there's a path, I will lead the world to Allah. <laughs> Greetings, my brother. Unto you, Imam. I bring you the expression of piety and devotion from my master. And for our parts, we charge you to assure Muhammad Gaddafi that we have complete faith in his devotion to Islam. To Islam and to the entire Arab world. My master Gaddafi wonders how we will expel the infidel from Jerusalem. So long as Egypt denies its Arab bonds. Egypt denies nothing. Yet its leader travels the world in search of his own dreams. Even now he goes to Romania, to Tehran, to plead for peace with the Shah. That which is spoken counts little. That which is done, that is what we value. Wise words, Imam. Yet we fear his words might lead to action. What then, we ask? So that is a grain of sand. Even at that Imam, there is a danger if it is caught in one's eye. Then one merely removes it. Precisely. My master wishes to remove that grain of sand. Might you come here? Why tell us? Because my master would do nothing to offend the Muslim Brotherhood. You have said nothing offensive to me. Or to the Brotherhood. Nightfall, listening into the radio messages. There can be no doubt. They are Egyptians, but in Gaddafi's pay. They do Libya's bidding. Gaddafi wants Sadat's head on a silver platter. He is to be assassinated on the 23rd of July. 
July 23rd, the 25th anniversary of the revolution. Exactly. And that revolution was bloodless. So I ask you, how far have they come? I will tell you. Gaddafi is a caveman. But Sadat, eh, Sadat might be something different. Do you have a way to reach him? Yes. Warn him with my compliments. And congratulations to our agents in Cairo. Overdoing the military a bit, aren't you? Unfortunately, no. Another threat on my life? Yes. And a warning from an unusual friend. A friend is a friend. I put no condition on that. Even if it is Menachem Bacon. Bacon? Yes. What would Bacon save my life? Newly elected? Perhaps he seeks peace. This is a token of goodwill. Bacon? Want peace? Impossible. You asked why it would save your life. I offer you one possible suggestion. Time will tell. Peace. With Israel. Mr. President. Yes. This letter from President Carter has just been delivered by a member of our embassy in Washington. And carried, not by diplomatic pouch. That's correct, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's all right. I'm all right. Go back to sleep. Is it President Carter's letter? Yes. I keep reading it over and over. I remember our private meeting at the White House last spring. You remember? and how much I liked him. We talked about our families and where we grew up. We're both farmers, you know, very much alike. I trust him, Jihan. He truly seeks peace in this world. And no one really wants war and war? Hmm. Not so. Take Assad. If he didn't have Israel as a scapegoat, the Syrian people would realize that he is a real enemy. And Iraq, their main interest in Israel, to use it as a test site for their nuclear weapons. Now, 
Egypt is not like the other Arab countries. But Carter challenges me to do something, make a dramatic move. But what? Egypt and Israel have been enemies for so long, we can't agree on anything. And so it will remain until someone has the courage to try something completely new? Perhaps. Perhaps the buy is correct. Perhaps Begin means to tell me something by warning me about Gaddafi. At any rate, I must respond. And so, I say, without reservation, let us go to Geneva. Let us seek peace. The war still rages on, unabated. We must bend. We have all lost so much. I. I am sure that there are those among us who have lost uh, a father, a son, a brother. I would even go to Jerusalem if I thought I'd be welcome. I, if I thought that it would help. Yes, my friends and my countrymen, I would go to Jerusalem in search of peace. Mr. Begin, uh, Mr. Begin, what about President Sadat's speech? If he means it, he's more than welcome. We wish him no harm. He knows that. Well, what do you suppose he means by that? That you should have reason to believe he wishes you no harm? Can you imagine my actually going to Jerusalem? <laughs> my name would be a curse throughout the entire Arab world. And to the rest of the world you would be a saint. And in time to the Arabs as well, if it brought peace. Heaven knows the Egyptians would bless you for it. They pay for war in blood and treasure. The Saudis? <laughs> the Saudis would fight Israel to the last Egyptian. Saudis guarantee our national debt. Besides, there's probably no more than words. We'll never be able to pin Begin down. Perhaps not, but we are no longer alone. According to our New York consular office, the American news media have discovered us. There is an army of them applying for visas. They'll pin Begin down. They'll pin both sides down. No, I did not consult with other Arab leaders, sir. My offer to visit Jerusalem is on the understanding that there are no preconditions and that I cannot speak for other Arab nations. Who said anything about conditions? I say we would welcome him. The only condition is that he actually come here. Action, not words. Mr. Begin wants action. I have acted in defiance of my Arab colleagues, but uh, I cannot go where I am not invited. If he wants an invitation, I'll come and get him. I can get there under my own steam, if I am wanted. And therefore, in the name of the people of Israel, I invite Anwar Sadat, president of Egypt, to come to Jerusalem. Of course I accept. And I suspect that this is the first visit by a head of state ever organized by television and news people. You and your colleagues have much to be proud of. How many years it took to make this 28-minute flight? But 
as you always say, all things are possible. Yes. Provided there is one courageous enough to lead. This is only the beginning. Perhaps. But if this is all you have accomplished, it will be enough. And what I'm so proud of you, so very proud, and so happy. Jihan, I think I am very nervous. Of course, of course. You are about to do the most important thing in your life. I hope so. Guard of Honor of the Israeli Defense Forces is ready for your inspection. General Shalom, I have been trying to catch up with you for years. I'm very, very happy to greet you as a guest in my country. And I have always wanted to meet you. What took you so long? <laughs> Hold it there, please, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the Knesset, 
the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Anwar Sadat. In the name of God the merciful, the compassionate, uh, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, just as we Arabs broke an important barrier when we crossed the canal and confronted your troops, now I come to make a psychological crossing because any life lost in war is the life of a human being, irrespective of whether it is an Arab or an Israeli. For even as I look at you now, I must remember that death carries no passport. Death knows no nationality. An Israeli dies in the same way as an Egyptian. Their blood can commingle in the desert sand until no one can tell one from the other. Is it therefore not possible that peace, like death, could also be without boundaries? We Arabs used to reject you, yes. We used to brand you the so-called Israel, yes. We refused to negotiate with you face to face. Yet today, I tell you, and I declare it to the whole world, that we accept to live with you in permanent peace and security based on justice. And that means, my friends, withdrawal from the Arab pot of Jerusalem and the recognition of the Palestinian people to establish a state on their land. It's the same old By coming propaganda. here, I don't know is still here in this room. I have set aside all precedents and traditions known by warring countries. I await your commensurate response. I do not expect it immediately. I am here only to deliver a message. This I have done. May God be my witness. I can hardly say that I am disappointed. Uh, you see, Judith, uh, we have been at war in this region for 30 years. It is mere months since I was in Jerusalem. Uh, my gesture will bear fruit, I have no doubt, but we must be patient. But how patient, Mr. President? Do you think the Arab nations will change their mind and support your peace initiative? 
uh, in their heart of hearts, they know that Israel is here to stay. They will recognize her as a sovereign state. It is uh, realism. I am sure there is a spirit of reconciliation in the Arab world. We are fed up with the killing, uh, the blood. If there is a road to peace, the Arab nation will take it. Thank you, Mr. President. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Would you mind signing this for me? Huh. I'd like to keep it for forever. <laughs> I'm quite glad of it. I'm glad you're done. A few minutes more and I would leave. Of course, you're going to Cyprus. Huh? If I catch my plane in time. These interviews of yours are getting longer and longer. Yeah, yeah. I'm a regular movie star. Newspapers, magazines, a celebrity. To all the wrong people. Be patient, Anwar. Hussein will move sooner or later. So will the Saudis. If you believe that, you deserve a vacation more than I imagined, my friend. I'm not that overtired, Alwar. I have faith. That's all. Find a neutral place to meet the Israelis. Hear what they have to say. I invited them to Cairo and you heard what my colleagues called me. From Riyadh to Damascus, they, they screamed for my life. But no one's been killed in all this time. The blood has stopped. Think about it. Now, Cairo is not the right place to entertain begging. All you need is somewhere that nobody could criticize you for going in search of the Israeli peace instinct. If there is one, in any event, I must be off on work. May Allah go with you. Salam. Salam. Palestinians, allies of Arafat, they telephoned a message to the embassy. Yusuf Sibai, the traitor, has been legally executed as a lover of Jews, a traitor to Islam and the Arab peoples. His death will be celebrated by all Arabs. Death to him. To his master, the so-called Anwar Sadat, we say, be warned, your death is close at hand. So this is the price you pay for wanting peace.
Anwar. I'm sorry. So, so sorry. It's, it's outrageous, Jihan. It's outrageous, the deaths. It will never stop unless I act. What can you do? No one will listen to you. None of my fellow Arabs know they seem willing to continue the slaughter. But the, I, I cannot, I cannot. I, perhaps it is the Egyptian in me. You are thinking of acting alone, aren't you? I... I, I must act alone. The, the death has got to stop. All my life it has been nothing but... intrigue, assassination, hate, death. And we've accomplished nothing. Yusuf died because of me, because I chose to go to Jerusalem, because deep down inside I think the pagan wants peace as much as I do. We both share the same violent youth and I think perhaps we both yearned for comfort in our old age. And we both know that the Israeli people, they, that they anguish in their hope for peace. But they fear us. We have promised them genocide. They fear we cannot be trusted. And. Uh, I know exactly how to get the bacon at the bargaining table where he can feel safe enough to chance peace. I, I know. Hagadah Maravit Yodim Anu Shechi Adama Hakusha Shel Eretz Yisrael Admat Yisrael Beitam Shel Anashinu Beyarba Mitoch Sheshet Alfei Hashanim Aharonot Amem Shalom Ezateret Lanu says it has been made clear that someone had to respond to the logjam in the peace process. The United States will provide a neutral arena for any person or nation who wishes to participate. Further, we are told there will be no press people, nor media persons. All will be in complete security. It 
is a dark day for all Arabs, Imam. Islam itself quivers in the cyclone of this Sadat meeting face to face with the Jew. It will be his death warrant. Either the Jew will betray Carter and be seen by the world as a warmonger, or the Jew will honor his desire for peace, and Sadat will stand criminal. And he's seen by the Arab world as the criminal who would talk to infidels for so slender a thing as peace. In either case, never, never, never. I can't just leave Sinai. The Sinai wells are the only source of oil Israel has. No Arab will sell us oil. We must keep the wells. He must leave Sinai. In return, he can have peace. We've heard that before. Only to be betrayed. There will be no betrayal this time. I came to Jerusalem to prove that this time would be different. If he intends to live in peace, why does he object to peaceful settlements of our people? Because the Sinai is Egyptian. Now, he must trust me. No new settlements and the existing ones must be dismantled. You ask me all that? Leave it all? Even the airfields? And then demand that we accept a formula which would give our hangman the rope he needs to kill us? I must be able to hold up my head in the Arab world. And I must survive in that world. Tell him I cannot budge. The only terms for peace between us is everything. It must be all or nothing. So, if I give up the oil wells, which we ourselves developed, free and clear, stop settlements in the Sinai, destroy existing Jewish communities, we draw from the Sinai, lock, stock, and barrel, even give him our airfields. Will he then exchange ambassadors? Will he recognize my nation, my people? Yes. If, and only if, he agrees to some autonomy for the Palestinians on the West Bank and Gaza, I did not come here to surrender. He knows this. I told this to the Knesset myself and to the world. He wants peace. He can have it. He can have it now. Only if he agrees with the terms and conditions. For only the promise of peace, I must give up everything. Good morning, Mr. Day. Oh, good morning. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? Yes, so green, America. <laughs> yes, at least on that we can agree. Huh? Uh, oh, no, <laughs> there must be more. 
If we didn't both believe that, then neither of us would have come here. Not necessarily. Well, what about political gain? Oh, 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 it will do wonders for your political status. Uh, and, and I certainly will not be a hero if I start to capitulate to those who've been pledged to our destruction from the very beginning. You make it sound like we can't win on anything. Uh, it's a possibility. Uh, my friend, mm. please, if, if, if you were me, uh, would you trust Sadat? Would you ignore all the blood that was spilled from the very day that you became a nation? Would, would you just give up your protection to this or that? Uh, you, you tell me, what would you expect? To believe that this Sadat has changed his spots. He's really a man of peace. Well, I, uh, I would look into the eyes of this Sadat, of my friend. And I would see fatigue, ghosts, the ghosts of Sadat's brother, his cousins, the many thousands of young bodies wasted, the ones who did not have a chance to rebuild a nation because they were killed trying to protect it. I would uh, see the Sadat as a different sort of fellow. Not the patriot fellow from the village. Oh, that's the that. The one who dreamed of martyrdom at the hands of the British. No, no. That young man died many years ago. I think perhaps I could see him like that. But even more, if this Sadat makes a bargain for peace, will he survive? Are there not those who will kill him for making such a bargain? Yeah, no doubt. Yet. Yet, if such a bargain were kept, if those who would bargain with Sadat to keep their words, then there would be peace, true peace. Peace that would not need a Sadat to survive. That would truly have lost all of us. Now, uh, this Bagan fellow, is he uh, the sort of fellow who uh, could keep any kind of bargain at all? Hmm? He wouldn't have any choice, would he? He would have surrendered all his bargaining chips. <laughs> so, now we have come down to it, huh? Whether these two chaps can uh, trust one another. This is what it comes down to. Huh? Us. What we are willing to risk on one another. Of course, on the surface, it may appear that uh, we will have regained all we have lost, but you will have gained peace for your people. Peace for my people. For 20 centuries, our motto has been, we fight, therefore we are. Can we change that? Will the world leave us to live in peace, treat us like human beings? Is the world ready for that? I am. It's a place to start. If you dare. We both must dare. What could we lose? Our lives. What could that mean to men like us? Two old reformed terrorists. It is time for us to forget the things that we live for, Nahim. And to stand up for those things that we're willing to die for.
Times calls you a great statesman for refusing to pick up the Nobel Peace Prize in Stockholm because, quote, the job of peace is not yet complete. We cannot receive praise for a work still in progress, unquote. On the other hand, there's an interview with Assad. The august president of Syria calls you fool. Says you will never live to see the day the Israelis keep their bargain with you. And what? Hmm? Did you hear? Of course. What is it? Nothing. Just more predictions of gloom from Assad. <laughs> he concerned himself with Syria, not me. You're in another world. No. Not another world. Same world. Different time. I was thinking of the time we first met, when the uh, British wanted to kill me because I wanted war. And now Assad wishes me dead because I seek peace. I must have changed a great deal to get from there to here. But I don't feel any different. <laughs> to me, you're not. You're still the same. Except a little wiser for what the years have taught. Only a little wiser? A little? Well, maybe more than oh, just yeah. a little. How much? Just a little. <laughs> Can you imagine that? To travel all of this way, only to be belittled by a woman, no less. Not a woman, your wife. Oh, quite right. Quite right. <laughs> oh.
is that the Lord has fulfilled for me everything I was meant to do on earth. I can now, with all confidence and peace of mind, and everything that makes life beautiful and wonderful, see my end. I have asked the Lord to make my end as fulfilling as he has made my life. And I can see myself approaching this end step by step with my heart and soul full of happiness.